Hey guys, Ian here and welcome to today's video in which I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with one of my favourite characters. First of all, I would like to start this particular video by saying that this painting is in fact an entry to Jazz's competition of the month. If you don't know Jazzy, he is a fantastic artist and YouTuber who runs a monthly competition with some fantastic prizes. Now, the deadline for this month's competition is actually the 27th of May, which I think is going to be basically tomorrow from when this video goes up. So if you don't have time to enter this one, never fear, for the next one is just around the corner, so you can uh, get ready and in on that one from the very, very beginning. Now, for this month's competition, the theme is level capped, in which we would create a depiction of a well-known character level capped, or to put it another way, a well-known character in the biggest, most badass version of himself that you can imagine. As I said at the beginning of the video, I have decided to go with one of my personal favorite characters, uh, and that is Catbug from The Bravest Warriors. Now, if you know The Bravest Warriors and you know the character Catbug, you will already be able to tell that I have really, really pushed him to some uh, fairly crazy extremes here. He, now, he bears very little resemblance to the original character, and I will make sure that at the end of this video, I do put a shot of Catbug as he appears in The Bravest Warriors up alongside mine because I think the two next to each other is a, a wonderful contrast. It's, it makes a very um, interesting, unique uh, juxtaposition between the two characters. So look forward to that. But Bravest Warriors, if you haven't seen, then I thoroughly recommend it to you. It is a fantastic series. The first two series are available totally free on YouTube. Uh, just, you know, watch the adverts at the beginning and, you know, that kind of thing. In fact, I think the episodes in the first series are only very short. I think they're either five or ten minutes. Very, very short episodes. Fantastic series. Very funny. It's got a very unique art style to it. It's... Uh, some things are along the similar vein to things like Adventure Time or possibly Rick and Morty. That sort of unique Adult Swim-esque animation which seems to be around all over the place at the moment, but I personally, I love it. Thoroughly recommend the series. The third series is also available on an alternative service, not available in the UK, but I believe they're working on that. I think I read somewhere that they are looking at finding a way of bringing the third series to the UK, finally! So thoroughly looking forward to that, and once again, I totally recommend that you go and check out all of the Bravest Warriors over on Cartoon Hangover right, right now. Well, after this video. Not right now, after, after you've done watching this. On to the actual design itself. Catbug is, as the name suggests, a cat bug. He's part cat, he's part bug. Quite often when you're playing a game and you have some kind of a level cap, uh, if you think about something like um, Skyrim, for example, your character stays the same from beginning to end. Doesn't actually change. All that changes is the gear that you have to make you look bigger and badder ass or uh, Catbug, that's not really possible, he doesn't really have gear as such, so I decided to go more down the route of something like Pokemon, where as you level up, the character physically changes, morphs into something bigger and badder and more kick-ass. So, because Catbug starts cute and small, I decided to make him big and ferocious, so we used a tiger and a lion as my references. And then with the bug side of things, Catbug starts with quite a cutesy ladybird-like shell, um, red with black spots. So to make it bigger and more badass, I decided to use a goliath beetle, which is the largest beetle in the world. It'll fit about in the palm of an adult's hand. They are huge things, and they have these wonderful patterns on their carapace. So as well as leveling him up to make him appear more physically powerful, I wanted to add in some extra powers as well. Now in the series, for one episode, Catbug is able to jump between two dimensions, the see-through zone and the real dimension that uh, the series takes place in. As I say, it's only touched upon on in one episode, and never again before or after that, which is a shame. But I've decided, well, what if this is a power that as the character progresses, they're able to use and control more. Now the see-through zone does come into the series quite a lot, so there are some references to what 
what it looks like so I decided to use that as the environment to put him in. I was also going to do some other things that a lot of characters when they kind of become uh, possessed or empowered by the uh, the see-through zone they uh, have glowing white eyes and sparks and things coming off of them but as I tried to add them in later in the painting I found that I actually started detracting from uh, some of the other lighting and things started flattening out the image so I decided to go against that and just have him in the environment of the uh, the see-through zone and I think that works quite nicely I did keep his eyes white though I didn't have them glowing in the end I think the pearlescent nature of them kind of uh, helps to emphasize that otherworldly power that I wanted to go with. Okay, so finally I guess I'll talk a little bit about the painting itself. I'm working on a 8x10 canvas at uh, 300 dpi uh, in Photoshop CC. I start as always on a off-white background and create a very loose sketch from reference which I then refine and start adding in on a layer behind the local color, flat color, that is the color that the object is when it's not in light and not in shadow. I then alternate back and forth between shadow and light. I create the shadows on a multiply layer and then the light just on a standard layer by using the picker and just heating up each color individually as I paint with it. Generally speaking, I'll do this maybe back and forwards two or three times. On this one I think I only did it twice, so two shadow layers and two light layers, before I then turned off the line work entirely and started adding in the final texture layer. Now this is the layer that really starts to bring things alive. Now in the video you should be watching this process as we speak, you'll see it's a lot of very fine intricate work um, and probably takes the longest out of this whole process. But the difference that it makes to the picture, and you'll see me turning it on and off the layer as I'm, as I'm painting it, the difference that it makes is astonishing. The more time that you can dedicate to adding in these textures and really, really adding in the details, the better. There have been paintings in the past where the getting the flesh, the meat down on the page has only taken me maybe a couple of hours, but then the texturing and the detailing work takes that painting into 20, 30 plus hours of work. So when you're working like this, it's very important to know that the project that you're working on is something that is going to grip you and keep you coming back to it time and time again. Otherwise, it's very easy to get burnt out and abandon a project and unfortunately there are fair few projects that I have sitting incomplete in various folders on my computer. But when you do find a project or a painting that you can just sit and work at it in this fine detail for hours and hours on end then the result can be fairly spectacular. Now in instances like this where I'm doing fur and hair, I usually have some um, brushes that I can use to cheat and get these layers in quickly. Um, but it is important to make sure that you are learning how to do these uh, textures and things for yourself because uh, you might not always have access to those brushes for a start, but also they can act like a crutch and uh, stop you from advancing if you're not learning how to deal with these textures and things yourself. So go out, learn how to draw for all different types of fur, coarse hair, all these things yourself, how to texture them at this level of detail and you'll have a vast range of textures that you can, can draw on and that will release you from the crutch of using brushes, texture brushes, and so forth in the future. A really good way of learning how a how to paint a texture is to actually trace a photograph of that texture onto a painting. Uh, it's something that I've covered in previous videos a little while back, if you go and check. I think the Grimator um, video that I did for one of Jazz's competitions in the past, I'm pretty sure that I touched on the subject of um, photo texturing during the breakdown video for that. So go and check that out. Uh, I'll leave a, a link at the end of this video and in the description. But we are now coming towards the end of this video, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, leave a like if you've enjoyed it and let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also, of course, if you haven't, please do subscribe. Also, go check out Jazz's competition and all the other entries to this current competition over on Newgrounds.com. And of course, also make sure to check out The Bravest Warriors on Cartoon Hangover. But like I say, that is it for this video, so thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time.